What's going on everyone? So the Golden State Warriors and the Sacramento Kings played game seven today and the Golden State Warriors absolutely dominated the Kings. It was pretty much all Warriors, basically start to finish. And the Golden State Warriors experience, uh, their ability to be consistent and just play their game no matter how bad things get. Uh, Steph Curry just... Being Steph Curry, come on. I mean, the guy is just ridiculous. Uh, completely took over down the stretch. Uh, and look, the Warriors, outside of Steph, uh, Kevon Looney and Steph, they were the only ones that really had a great game. No one else really had a great game. But it just, again, shows the ability of the Golden State Warriors. They're the defending NBA champions for a reason. They're a team that's been there as much, if not more, than anybody, right? So their experience is huge. Steph Curry, I mean, come on. What can you say about this guy? And the Warriors got it done. Got to give the Warriors credit for a team that was as bad on the road this year uh, as anybody. Uh, the only teams that were worse were tanking teams, like the Spurs and the Pistons. Uh, and they were able to win two games in Golden State or in uh, Sacramento. Uh, just is applaud worthy for the Warriors. But... That means the Lakers and the Warriors are going to face in a seven-game series in the second round. And look, this is the marquee matchup, right? LeBron versus Steph, Lakers versus Warriors, uh, LeBron and his history with the Warriors. This is a real opportunity for him uh, to kind of just send them home, right? And look, I think that the Lakers will beat the Warriors. I really do. Uh, I w said I wanted the Warriors. I said I wanted the Warriors before the playoffs started. I said, give us the Grizzlies, the Warriors, uh, and then Denver. Uh, because no matter what, what is anybody going to say if the Lakers come out ahead, right? Yeah, you played the Memphis Grizzlies, who were the two seed, best defense in the West as far as playoffs go outside of us. Uh, you know, they had the best home record in the entire league. You beat them, which the Lakers did. Then, if you go play the Golden State Warriors, the defending champions, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, I mean, the list goes on and on with their talent. You send the defending champions home, and then you either play the, the Phoenix Suns, who many people believe is going to come out the West, or you play the Denver Nuggets, who are the number one seed, and just seem like a well-oiled machine all year, and you beat them, and you're in the NBA Finals, like, what can anybody say? So the Lakers are going to play the Warriors, and I think that this is a great matchup for the Lakers. Uh, the Sacramento Kings were giving the Warriors all kinds of fits because their ability to score in a multitude of ways and being able to score inside in the interior, right? You saw a lot of times in this series uh, when shots weren't falling, they were able to just dump it down and get to the rim and score in the paint in the mid-range. The mid-range was really open. And the beauty of the Lakers is... We have several guys that can do that. I mean, they had, you know, Monk and they had Fox who were great in this series. But, I mean, think about it. We have Rui. We have Reeves. We have D'Lo. Uh, I mean, Lonnie, Beasley can both operate in the mid-range uh, if we need some more scoring and stuff. I know Beasley had a really rough series against the Grizzlies, but they, they also had an elite defense, right? And they had great defensive guards and stuff. Uh, the, the Lakers aren't going to have to worry about that. I wouldn't mind giving them, again, a very short leash, but giving them an opportunity to try to see if they can get the offense going because we could use as many offensive weapons against the Warriors as possible. Uh, but we'll do like a full detailed breakdown as we get closer to the series on Tuesday. Uh, also, another side thing worth noting. So the Lakers are going to have four days rest going into that series. Uh, Warriors are only going to have like a day, day and a half. So that's huge, especially with the Warriors being an older team. Uh, we get the rest. We could really use that. I'd really love to go in to Golden State and steal game one. That would be massive and really set the tone for the series. But to touch back to what I was talking about, I mean, Reeves should have a field day. Dennis Schroeder should have a field day. D'Lo should have a field day. D'Lo was really good in the two games after the trade. And that was before we, like, that was our, like, first, like, handful of games, if that. Uh, right? So, D'Lo, his familiarity with the Warriors, that's going to be huge. His ability to get into and score at all three levels is going to be huge. He really stepped up big in that Memphis series. I expect him to continue that, and I think it'll be easier for him in the Warriors series. Same thing for Austin Reeves. A lot of the things that Sacramento was able to do against the Warriors and have success, the Lakers are going to have that same success and going to be able to do those same things, but the Lakers have more elite talent. Right? Like, yes, they had De'Aaron Fox, yes, they had Malik Monk, but we have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, right? 
Davis is night and day better than Sabonis. Right? LeBron is better than anybody on the Sacramento Kings. D'Lo is, in my opinion, an overall better player than Malik Monk. Uh, with his playmaking and just his ability to shoot at all three levels, just like Malik Monk. Uh, but also, uh, D'Lo is also bigger. And again, his familiarity with the Golden State Warriors. Austin Reeves is, in my opinion, is just a solid guy. Uh, he would be starting on the uh, on the Sacramento Kings, very likely. Uh, he, In my opinion, he's better overall than like a Kevin Herter. Uh, so again, Lakers, in my opinion, have more front talent. Rui Hachimura should be massive in this series again. Uh, Anthony Davis, this should be a field day for Anthony Davis. Don't get me wrong, Gavon Looney and uh, Draymond Green, they're going to be trying to hammer AD. They're going to be trying to go at AD. But Anthony Davis should be able to dominate this series. Uh, for his career, Anthony Davis is 25-12-3 against the Golden State Warriors. If you look at it for the Lakers, I believe it's something like 30-15-3. and uh, So Anthony Davis should have a field day against this team. He should dominate this team, uh, especially defensively. If he is what we saw in that Memphis series against this Warriors team, Warriors are going to have their troubles. Right, And the beauty is the Lakers are going to be able to defend the Warriors a lot like they were able to defend Memphis. You couldn't do that against the Kings. But just like we saw against Memphis, the Lakers aren't going to have to worry about Kevon Looney jacking up threes and, and knocking down the three ball. Right, He's solely interior. So Anthony Davis is going to be able to play spy the whole game. He's not going to have to get drawn out like they would with the Sabonis. Draymond Green, uh, just like Dylan Brooks and Tillman, if he makes six, seven threes, you live with that. You let him shoot those threes. You just contain the Steph Curry, the Klay Thompson, the Jordan Poole, the Andrew Wiggins, you got to do a good job on the perimeter. Guess who has the best perimeter defense? The Lakers. Guess who has the best overall defense? The Lakers. Guess who's leading the playoffs in transition and transition points? The Lakers. Guess who loves and leads in turnovers? The Warriors. Everything is set. The table is set for the Lakers to dominate this series, and I believe they will. LeBron James and Anthony Davis know how good this Warriors team is, knows that they need to put them away, and they need to put them away swiftly. They don't have anybody that can stop or slow down Anthony Davis, and they don't have anybody to stop or slow down LeBron James. Andrew Wiggins, don't get me wrong, he's a good defender. He's going to be able to guard LeBron, but he's not going to stop or slow down LeBron if LeBron's being aggressive and getting to the hoop. They're not going to be able to stop and slow down Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is too much of a monster for them uh, when he's locked in and playing to the level that we know. All of our guys that were successful and scored in the Grizzly series should all be able to do it with much easier ability in the Warriors series because the Warriors don't have anybody to play. Not just that, but the Warriors are very small, just like we saw with the, with the Memphis Grizzlies. Only difference is the Warriors are smaller. So that is huge. That is massive. We should dominate the boards. We should get a lot of second chance points. You got to keep Kevon Looney off the boards. You got to box him out because he's really good at giving the Warriors second chance points and he cannot give them second chance points, right? The Warriors are too lethal with that. Got to keep track of guys. Vando will definitely have his hand full against Steph Curry, but we've seen him have a lot of success against him and basically everybody, right? Uh, Dennis Schroeder is going to be massive. One thing that the Warriors had a lot of trouble with, a lot of trouble with, uh, again, regular season playoffs, two different things, but still, I think it'll translate well, is when Dennis Schroeder and D'Lo were on the court together. The Warriors had a really hard time guarding both of them because it's just two completely different changes of pace. And Dennis just being that menace on the defensive end and just pestering Steph Curry and Clay and Poole and all of them. Uh, I think that that's going to be really massive. I think that's going to be really huge. It's going to come down to Anthony Davis and LeBron James. We go as far as they take us, but I really think the role guys are going to see and go, whoa, this is a lot easier than I thought, right? Because Memphis was an elite defense. They were really good defensively. And here's the thing. The, 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 here's what the Grizzlies could do that the Warriors can't. The Warriors could pack the paint with Tillman and Triple J on Anthony Davis because they had Dylan Brooks. They had uh, Jean Morant. They had Bain, 
right? Three guys that can guard the perimeter and are very good perimeter defenders. They have the speed, they have the quickness, they have the footwork, all of that stuff. As much as we like to clown them, as much as we, especially Dylan Brooks, they are very good defenders and the numbers back it up, right? And so they were able to pack the paint, leave Vando open in the corner and just guard, you know, LeBron, uh, D'Lo and Reeves or Schroeder and Reeves, whoever, right? Whoever it was that was in the game, they were able to do that. The Warriors can't. Because the Warriors, Steph can't guard me, (laughs) Jordan Poole can't guard me, Clay isn't the defender he once was, Andrew Wiggins is really the only like elite defender that they have. Now they do have guys like Gary Payton, but are they going to play Gary Payton 40 minutes a game? Right? I just, I don't see that happening. And the Warriors love to go that four guard lineup with Steph, Clay, Poole, Wiggins, they really like that with like, you know, a Kavon Looney down in the center. We saw that a lot this series. I expect them to try to do that this series. And I think Troy Brown, and I want to make a video about this independently. I think Troy Brown might be huge this series. Huge. And not from the offensive side. I know a lot of people, they talk about, you know, he was terrible offensively in the Grizzlies series, but he was great everywhere else. He was really good defensively against Bane. If you don't believe me, go back and watch the tape or go look up the stats against him on Bane's. There was three times in this series that Desmond Bane was going off and they switched Troy Brown on him and that stopped. I mean, completely. He didn't score a single point on three separate occasions where he was just going off. Troy Brown is massive on the defensive side. He does the dirty work. He does the hustle plays. Again, I think it's worthy of dedicating a video. I also want to talk about Rui. And we're going to start you know, ramping up on the player breakdowns and stuff and just the breakdowns in general for this team. But first look, first glance... I think the Lakers win this in six at the most, at the most. I wouldn't be shocked if the Lakers win this in five. I really wouldn't. I think the Warriors, they're exhausted. They just played a grueling seven-game series. I think they're going to have limited rest. Uh, Nobody else has played great except for Steph Curry in this series and Kevon Looney. you got to credit them. Um, I just think if Steph isn't going to be able to beat the Lakers by himself. And unless I think I think the reason I think it'll go six games is I think you'll have the game where the Lakers fall asleep, and I think you'll have the game where the Warriors just shoot the lights out, and I think that that will lead to six games. Um, ideally, I would love if the Lakers don't have that lazy game where they fall asleep, then they win this series in five. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts.